As I was cleaning up the shelves, I found this elm. I do not remember potting it. I do not remember putting it on this angle. But I have to think whether or not I want to try and straighten it up. And I spent a few minutes and decided, no, I'm going to do something completely ridiculous. And I'm going to wire it into the, one of those crazy imported S shapes that you see all over the place. I don't, I'm not into them, but I think this will be entertaining. So when you're inserting wire into the soil, cut a chiseled edge so it pokes in a little bit easier. I've already thought about the direction I want to turn this tree, which is clockwise. So I'm going to spiral the wire along the trunk in a clockwise direction. You really need to plan that out. You can't just go throwing wires on because you may discover that you want to turn the tree counterclockwise and you've wired it clockwise and now the wire loosens on you or it doesn't hold right. So good idea to plan this out before you start applying the wire. This is where I wish I had a third hand or an assistant with me to hold the pot in place. One of these days my students will show up. Alright, so going to bend this in that crazy imported S shape that you see all over the place. Now, between that peak and that peak is where I'm most likely to snap the branch or the trunk. So what I want to do is pay attention to where the peaks are. And then the other thing I want to pay attention to is where the branches are popping out because I like to have my branches emanating from the trunk at the outside of curves or whenever I'm doing a change of direction. All right, so I need a thinner wire up top. So when you transition from one thickness to another, go down either a half millimeter or the next gauge and then put, don't waste your wire. So try and have two things going on at once. So if I know that I'm going to work with this branch and I want to continue wiring the top of the tree, then I will start my wire where I have another branch that needs to be positioned. So now I can spiral out on the branch. This time of year I want to avoid being too snug because it is really really late to be wiring. Especially for me because I will forget about them and not do what needs to be done. Alright, so got our little crazy S going. can rotate the tree clockwise and put some branches in the back. So I think ultimately these two will not be incorporated into the design. That may or may not be my first branch. This may or may not be my first branch. I think I want to go with that one. Given a choice between two branches, one in a great spot, and one in an okay spot, keep the one in the great spot. I'll also keep the one in the okay spot as backup in case something happens to the one that's in a really good spot. So twist this a little bit. Bring that around. And now I have to go look up here. This thing is a little tall. 
and determine what I want to do with this part of the tree because I've got a potential trunk line there and a potential trunk line there. I'm not sure if I want to go. Well, could probably bring that out as a back branch, so let's let's go for it. We'll go for the tall one. That may not be an issue. That may that's already dried out, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's see right where it transitioned. Alright. So with that in mind, do I want to go here or do I want to go here? I'm going to try and turn this into a branch in the front. No guarantee it's going to work. And it didn't, because I know if I roll it anymore, I'm going to lose it. So I can eliminate it now. And then bring this up. Not going to need that. Probably not going to need that. All right, so now the question becomes, what do the roots look like, and should I up-pot it? So I think we're definitely going to up-pot it. So we'll inspect the roots here. My usual complement of moss, oxalis, other unidentified weeds. Alright, now I think I may also insert a piece of foam between the wire and the trunk so I'll, I can prevent too much wire scarring, although knowing me I'll probably forget about the top of the tree and wire scar that up. So I've got some white fuzzy stuff here could be root mealy bugs. Not sure. All right. So he's kind of funky. I wonder if this is how they do it in China. I bet not. So roots are running around in circles in here. Do a quick snip around the perimeter, comb that out, and see what I have in the way of surface roots that I can take advantage of. I see a couple oddball roots up top. This one here doubling back on itself. And for those of you who are freaking out because I wired and I'm root pruning, don't. It's all about the aftercare. Decent conditions for aftercare. It will not freeze. It'll be under 60 degrees during the day, but over 50, so the roots will move. And it will get super thrive. And there'll be no wind on it. And as of 
this week the birds have decided they don't want to hang out in the greenhouse anymore. So I think putting the food outside for them is helping. All right, so now we need to pick an appropriate size container. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking 10 inch bulb pan. No, better yet, eight or ten inch mum pot as opposed to a bulb pan. So this will give it some more root run, but it won't overdo it in terms of holding on too much water, so I'm not going to have to worry about rotting roots or anything like that. Although, that is something I rarely, rarely, if ever, encounter with elms. It's more likely to happy would happen for me with junipers, since where I'm most likely to rot roots, and something else that I rot the roots on, I can't remember. But if you are a chronic overwaterer, Adjust your mix, add more coarse material, or you could add perlite to a peat base mix, so you don't have to worry about overwatering. Super Thrive. All right. And there's my chance to insert a little piece of foam or if you have it, aquarium air hose works really well. So I'll put that between the wire and the root. So now I don't have to worry so much about scarring the root. Try and find my planting angle. And then you firm it up. And the battle always is to make sure it's firm enough that the plant stands on its own, but not so compacted that you can't get your finger inside the container. I want it Firm enough to hold the plant, soft enough that the plant can issue new roots without any problems, which is why I like to tease them out even if I'm not doing a root pruning so that they move into the new soil. So that's my planting angle, so now I'll adjust I'll adjust the top of the tree These are funky roots, I like them. So now I'll adjust the top of the tree Now I want the front of the tree to incline towards the viewer Don't. I have no problem with the tree going back and then coming forward. So I'm just going to straighten that up just a tad. And this is still young and pliable. I'll be able to make any changes if I hate it. But you don't make those changes right away. You wait a good six months before you play with the tree. You work the branches too often, too hard, and you'll lose them. Can't stress the cambium that much. So you make your, you make your decisions and you live with it for a few months. If you really, really hate it, my instructor used to say, stick it on a shelf and forget about it. Come back to it in six months. You got a better chance of keeping the tree alive that way. So I'm just gonna put a little 
wire here. This is on much tighter than I would like. For this time of year. Finish this one. And then we'll bring him to the front. Always support the branch that you're bending where it attaches so you are less likely to damage. I think that is dried out. I think the tips are dried out on this one. So we'll find out in a couple weeks. We'll see where the buds are. Uh, maybe I'll end up with a couple little advantageous buds somewhere. But just make this crazy S like you see out of China and we'll see what it does. So this is where I'm supposed to tell you to here we go. Let's let's decorate it. This is the rare flowering elm tree. Never before seen. I've got a story to tell you one day about <laughs> something my instructor did to a client who brought in a dead tree. But anyway, silliness aside, you need to let me know what you want to see. Hit the like, subscribe button, buttons, and let me know what it is I can do for you. And in the meantime, go out and play with your trees. Have fun.